Since we first looked up at the moon and stars, we must have asked questions about our place in the universe. So how did life begin on Earth? Is life common out there in the solar system and beyond? Are there other civilizations out there waiting to be discovered? And what would it be like to live on other planets? Well, in this video, we're going to meet the scientists who are using cutting edge research to try and answer those questions. Twenty-five years ago, it was only the planets in the solar system that we knew. But since then, you know, we've found about 5,000 planets orbiting other stars. So with the discovery of planets orbiting stars other than the Sun, everything has changed and nothing has changed. Now, there might be a large probability that there's another intelligent civilization somewhere in the universe. But we also have to recognize the universe is big, and I mean really big. SETI is the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. We're looking for technical civilizations like our own, or perhaps even more advanced than our own. So today we are at Jodro Bank Observatory. Uh, it hosts the third largest steerable radio telescope in the world. So one of the things we're trying to do is to look for artificial signals they have a completely different characteristic from the natural signals produced by planets and stars and galaxies. For example, on the radio, you would expect the signal, a technological signal, to be very narrow in frequency, very narrow band. And nature doesn't produce those signals, but technology and technical civilizations do. My area is post detection. So if we have the divide that the listening out there and actually picking up and detecting the signal, that's not my area. It's once we've got it, I need to unpack it. So by analysing over 60 languages and all the different ways we encode language on our planet, underlying it is one major truth that we've all got the same brain. Now, an alien brain may be different, of course, but the elegant way you structure such a complex phenomenon, such as language and communication, needs to be efficient and such that it has a fingerprint of its own. So you create a great big corpus, what we call it, a body of language that incorporates all the different ways humans do it, but also, as best we can, how animals do it. And so I look everything from bees to humans, and in between it, with apes, birds, and of course, dolphins. If we know we're in a conversation, I would say the best way is to have a great hello there, this is us, simple message, and then build upon that. So behind that would be a more complex, more detailed message about us. And then we'll send that off and then wait for in a generation or two, the response. What actually happens if we find extraterrestrial life? Because it could happen anytime. It could happen tomorrow. It could happen within the next hour. Now, when it happens, will it change something? Now, a lot of people will say, well, it doesn't change the price of beer in a pub. However, it will change perspective. If we detect a signal, it will be incredibly exciting. There's a huge, potentially a huge amount we could learn, um, not just about science, but about culture. Um, do they have religion? Um, do they love each other? Do they know about all these concepts? They have likely to have gone through phases of war like we have and come through the other side and learn from it and be better for it. Any advanced civilization would be that benevolent type of mindset. But I think the question is so important um, that we really ought to be sort of trying to do this. We really ought to be searching for these signals. We don't know whether we'll detect any signal from other intelligent civilizations. We've never detected one before. But one thing we know for sure, if we don't search, then the chances are zero.